Reverend Fathers, uh, dear Simon, uh, Lord Protector of the Church. Lord Protector sounds not right to some extent because it was also the title of uh, Oliver Cromwell, but Cromwell was protecting nothing except the kingdom of Satan, whereas uh, Saint Joseph is the Lord Protector of the Catholic Church. That's his main, uh, his main title, because he is the husband of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And a good husband takes a good care of his wife and protects her, defends her, feeds her, and uh, does everything for uh, her interest and her well-being. That's what a good husband is. And the Blessed Virgin Mary, of course, is the highest figure of the Catholic Church. And it's because of the chastity of Saint Joseph that Our Lady was uh, able to uh, bear fruit. It is a blasphemy, says Saint Jerome, it's a blasphemy to say that uh, Saint Joseph um, had intercourse with our Blessed Virgin Mary. It's a horrible blasphemy. How, how, how is it that some men uh, say such a thing? When uh, Our Lady by becoming the mother of God and by keeping her virginity uh, in conceiving and in uh, begetting our blessed Lord, how is it imaginable that Our Lady should lose her virginity at the hands of Saint Joseph? Whereas uh, Saint Joseph, remaining the true husband of our blessed Virgin Mary, that is, when, they, when he married the, the blessed Virgin Mary, he was granted by Our Lady the right over the body of Our Lady. But it's precisely by not exercising this right that Our Lady was able to bear fruit. So Saint Joseph is the, uh, the exemplar of the uh, marital chastity, the chastity in marriage, the Catholic notion of chastity by which the spouse marry in order to glorify God uh, through their uh, offspring. Because it is the chastity of Saint Joseph that enabled Our Lady to be the Mother of God, as we just read in the um, in the Gospel of Saint Matthew. As we just read, and it is the angel is requesting Saint Joseph to uh, to acknowledge that his uh, his wife is bearing fruit thanks to his uh, chastity. And it is utterly wonderful to contemplate the uh, the fruitfulness and the protection that Saint Joseph is providing to his wife, to the Blessed Virgin Mary, who is truly the, the wife of Saint Joseph. And certainly uh, she gave to him a heart. The Immaculate Heart of Mary belongs in a very special way to Saint Joseph, just like the heart of Saint Joseph is very closely united to the heart of the, our Blessed Mother. And today we rejoice very much at the sight of the protection that Saint Joseph is granting to the Catholic Church because it's on this day that uh, Bishop Williamson is providing the, what we call the resistance to the Novus Ordo because our movement is a movement of the resistance against this uh, horrible new church which is called the Novus Ordo which we reject entirely because this new church, this Novus Ordo church is rejecting the Catholic faith and um, we do not have any uh, personal, uh, you know, uh, war to wage against Bishop Fele. But if he goes back to the Nouveau Sordo, we resist uh, him just like we resist the Nouveau Sordo. And we resist him because we, we are resisting the Nouveau Sordo in the first place. And all our oaths, all our promises, all our engagements as priests, as seminarians, and uh, as, uh, as bishop, in the case of Bishop Williamson, all these engagements are uh, to fight against modernism and, and, and the offspring of modernism, which is the Novus Ordo Church, and we have nothing to do with this Novus Ordo Church. And in order to protect ourselves from this Novus Ordo Church, we have to avail ourselves of, uh, of sacraments, and uh, especially uh, holy orders that make uh, you know, most of the other sacraments available. So, you know, until recently we were, you know, Passing through our head, you know, what would happen if we would have no more bishops, and uh, what what would be obliged to do, and and God would uh, you know oblige us to go through a darker night of the faith and a greater sacrifice for the truth. 
But there are limits to our, to our capacities and there are limits to our crosses, definitely. And um, this, uh, this ordeal uh, is, uh, seem, uh, seems to be passing away from us. So that it will be, uh, we will be able to carry out this fight with uh, a greater ease, with a greater ease, because we are gonna have a, a bishop uh, soon coming. We already, is, you know, we are gonna schedule, you know, a visit of Bishop Four. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's. We are already thinking about it to organize the, bis the visit of Bishop Four in Australia, where Bishop Williamson could not enter, in the Philippines, and uh, and uh, and in India. It's good for Bishop Williamson to enjoy a little respite and a few uh, vacations from his labors. And uh, this, um, this visit also will enable to show how necessary this action is. Because according to canon law, uh, the, uh, um, a bishop can consecrate another bishop only with the help of uh, a co-consecrating bishop. It's necessary for liceity. But in the case of necessity, something which is not licit in normal times becomes licit. And this is our case. We cannot find another bishop alongside uh, Bishop Williamson. The only bishop that could join him would perhaps be Bishop Tissin Malay, who agrees with the position of the resistance. In his sermon in, uh, uh, recently, in 20th of December, or later, you know, or just a few days later, just after, a few days after the, the, the horrible sermon of Bishop uh, Fele in La Reja, Bishop uh, Tissier stated the, uh, the position of the resistance, which is that we cannot rejoin this sect, which is the Novus Ordo Church. There is something left of the Catholic Church in, uh, in the official church, but not much, not much. And, uh, and less and less, because they are further uh, going uh, uh, into the loss of faith. They are further going into the abomination of the desolation. Like uh, very recently, uh, a transsexual in Spain was uh, finger pointed by other parishioners in Spain, and rightly so. And that transsexual got a phone call from Pope Francis himself. He says, oh my dear, come over, come in Rome. And that transsexual was glorified in the Vatican by Pope Francis, and it's just the latest instance of the of this new papacy extolling the uh, the vice, the, the most horrible vice, the vice of Sodom. I'm not sure if uh, there was uh, even transsexuals in Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm not even sure of that. But it's uh, this Novus Ordo Church is very far gone. It's not showing any sign of changing except for the worse. It's not changing for the better. It is not true. And so in the light of this, we cannot uh, rejoin this Novus Ordo Church. We can only pray for their conversion. We can only pray for their, uh, for their either their conversion or for their removal by uh, the hand of God. And then by uh, an official declaration of heresy of the Catholic Church by a good Pope, a good traditional Pope or an ecumenical council which shall declare them heretics. That's, that's what's hanging over their heads and that's what we are waiting for. For the good of the rest of the Catholic world, for the good of all those innocent souls who do not, do not know better and who need this, uh, this pronouncement. But in the meantime, what we have to do is to keep the faith and we, uh, it's very hard to keep the faith without the sacraments. It's very hard to keep the faith without holy orders, without confirmation, without the, uh, the, the, um, the, the, the sacraments that the bishops are, are giving, and then without the priests who uh, are ordained by bishops and will give you the Mass in, uh, in, the, in the future. It's, it's very hard. It's much harder to do without bishops. And the Catholic Church doesn't run without bishops. It's the bishops who empower the priest. The priest cannot do, he cannot say the mass without a chalice. And, because, and so it's the bishop who consecrates the chalice, not the priest. Once we build a church here, it's the bishop who will bless that church. The priests are not allowed to bless churches. 
Normally, uh, I shouldn't bless the vestments that I blessed. It should have been a bishop who blessed them. I blessed them because it was necessary to use them. But normally, it's the bishop who should bless the, the bells that we've bought, you know, uh, and uh, we're going to buy another one, a middle-sized one, this weekend. Those bells are going to be blessed by a bishop. It's the bishop who provides not only the ordination to the priest, but it provides all the instruments that the priest needs. Because the Catholic Church want, wants to express that it is run by bishops, not by priests. As a priest, I am acting on behalf of my bishop and under my, uh, my bishop. I am, uh, my, my priesthood is incomplete. My priesthood is, uh, is limited. And so you can see today the magnitude of the, of the help that is provided uh, to us by, uh, by St. Joseph. And then uh, we pray St. Joseph that uh, he continues to provide the Catholic Church with a good hierarchy. Why did this crisis went so far in its magnitude and in its gravity? Because there is a need to go to the root of the problem, to the root and the beginning of this crisis of the Church, which started a long time ago. It started when uh, the, the clergy uh, become to whistle out, when, uh, when the clergy started to, uh, to turn bad. And that's a long time ago. A long time ago, even St. Pius X was complaining about Cardinal Ferrari, the Archbishop of uh, Turin or Milan, if I'm not mistaken. He was complaining about the inertia of the French bishops of his time. And even in his time, you know, a Mason, Cardinal Rampola, could have been elected a Pope hadn't the Holy Emperor of Austria-Hungary intervened rightfully hadn't this, this very good Catholic monarch uh, who was removed uh, by the Masons after World War I, hadn't he intervened, there would have been a Masonic Pope a hundred years ago already, thanks to him. Then the crisis of the Church started to go full swing only uh, in, uh, in the 60s. And so we have, uh, the Catholic Church has a much deeper problem. It's a problem of leadership. And so perhaps the, you know, we go to such an extremity in order to restart, to restart the uh, chain of command of the Catholic Church. Not that we are creating another church, a parallel church. We do not claim ordinary jurisdiction. That ordinary jurisdiction is in the wrong hands. It's occupied by the enemies of the faith. But this is not, we are not taking upon ourselves any ordinary jurisdiction. We are only, only taking this extraordinary jurisdiction in order to provide you the sacraments and the teaching of the faith. Nothing more and nothing less. And that's, we are happy enough with this. Because the church, the canon law, always provides jurisdiction when it's needed. It's a real jurisdiction. Canon 209. It's a real jurisdiction which is granted to us and to those uh, auxiliary bishops who are not taking any territorial jurisdiction. But they, they are there for your protection. And uh, actually, your need, uh, not your authority, but your need is what gives them uh, uh, jurisdiction over you. And so we are, you know, re-establishing, um, after the failure of the uh, uh, XSPX, we are re-establishing the same means for you to survive. As you can see, the development of this bamboo seminary in the middle of nowhere, purposedly in the middle of nowhere. You are, you are seeing under your very own eyes uh, another network which is uh, uh, getting ample and which is growing. Uh, it seems that uh, by the month of June, Australia is going to have 10 priests. 10 priests. These new priests are announcing themselves. And so the this entity of Australia is uh, already uh, having uh, 10 priests and uh, 40 plus uh, mass centers and 2,000 faithful altogether. Altogether, if you include all the missions, the biggest chunk be being Philippines and India, but Australia is also getting big. And uh, East Asia is growing with the addition of a new mission in, in Thailand. And so the, the Catholic Church is not dying. The Catholic Church is uh, always growing. Let us hope and pray that we do the right thing and let us hope and pray that we pray for our 
newly uh, consecrated uh, bishop and that we support him, we support his priest and uh, salvation can be brought uh, to a greater number of people until Saint Joseph goes further and uh, reinstate the, the Catholic faith on the, on the Sea of Rome. Reinstate tradition in its rights. It is, we have nothing, we have nothing to ask from the Novus Ordo official church. They are the ones who must comply. They are the ones who must bend to, um, to the truth. Just like we also uh, have no choice but to bend to the truth. And we per perfectly see that if we fail, God can replace. Just like God is providing a replacement for the, the three bishops, uh, unfortunately, that are failing in the SSPX. So the replacements are, uh, are appearing. After two years, now there is a complete replacement which is being uh, established by divine providence for those who have failed. So should we fail, we will be replaced. Because in the Catholic Church, the message is everything. It is the message, it is the Catholic faith that is the formal cause of the Catholic Church. What makes the Catholic Church the Catholic Church is the Catholic faith. So the authority in the Catholic Church is at the service of the Catholic faith. This is the uh, constitution of the uh, First Council of Vatican. The Pope himself cannot preach his own fancies. And uh, I just read the, today, you know, the verse in Numbers. Moses tells the, 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 the Hebrews, in order to show you that what I've been telling you all along is not the creation of my own fancy, the earth is going to open under your feet and is going to swallow you all, Korea, Dathan and Abraham, with all your families, with all your wives and children and donkeys and, uh, and, and, and sheep and tons and furniture, everything, to show you that I am not talking my own fancy. I am not talking the works of my imagination. That's what Moses told them. This is the Catholic religion. The, the object of the Catholic religion is not that we talk to you our own personal fancy. You have to abandon us if we talk to you our own personal fancies. And the, the Novus Ordo Church is a fanciful church. It's a creation of modern philosophy. It's a creation of a man putting himself at the center of everything and uh, taking God as an associate. You know, establishing himself, as Emmanuel Kant says, and as Lumen Gentium says, uh, you know, as as something created for himself by God. That is a separate entity, a separate autonomy with God. Somebody who is in, uh, on equal st standing with God. And we have nothing to do with this blasphemy. We got nothing to do with this insult made to the Divine Majesty. As you can clearly see, we are doing our best to worship and adore our infinite Lord. And so some people give us a beautiful brass cross. Others give us these beautiful shiny uh, altar cards and these beautiful uh, candlesticks and then the, this beautiful uh, shiny uh, bell with four bells and, uh, and these beautiful crates and then this beautiful seminary chalice and those beautiful vestments which we didn't pay for. Why? Because we want to worship God. We want to adore Him. The object of our religion is to adore God. We don't want a religion that adores men. Because it's not going to help man in the first place. Man is going to become ever more miserable with this type of false religion. It's not helping anybody. It's not doing any service to anybody to follow that false religion. And so it's only in order to make safe this message that a, a great ceremony is taking place today in, uh, in Brazil, where the resistance to the Novus Ordo Church is the strongest. With uh, uh, in South America, three uh, monasteries of men already, two Benedictines and one of the family of Our Lady, and several convents of nuns and schools 
and, uh, and many priests and faithful in Brazil. It's surprising. And it's, it looks like the fulfilling of the prophecy of Our Lady of Fatima, that in Portugal, the dogma of the faith will remain. It's, it, and and this, this event is taking place from Campos, from the diocese of Bishop Castro Mayer, who alongside with Archbishop Lefebvre was faithful to his mandate to keep the faith and transmit the faith. So it's a very historical day and it's filling our souls with, a, with an immense relief, with an immense joy at the sight of the fidelity of uh, His Excellency uh, Bishop Williamson. And uh, truly we can say now, Fidelis Inventus Est. He says on his motto, Fidelis Inveniatur, may he be found faithful. Now this, uh, this answer to this uh, subjunctive, now uh, you can, uh, we can uh, change the tense and say Fidelis Inventus Est. He has been found faithful. Not only he has uh, you know, told us the truth, he's made promises and he's been uh, good to his promises. And that's very important. That's very important because it's a foundation also of marriage, of the marriage between uh, uh, St. Joseph and the Blessed Virgin Mary. The fidelity, uh, the bonum fidei, the bonum fidei, the fidelity, the truthfulness in action is something very necessary, very necessary for you little ones. You, you need very much a faithful clergy, people who will not let you down, people who will turn to your needs, people who will not turn uh, their backs on you when trouble is coming, when the walls are coming. That's what you need. You need a clergy which is faithful. And nothing is guaranteed as far as we are concerned here. We have not proven to you much so far, except for the Suelo, of course. But otherwise, the rest of us, we haven't proven you much. So pray for us. Pray that we have, that we show a comparable fidelity to the fidelity that has been shown by uh, his, uh, his Lordship, Bishop Williamson, today. Pray that... Uh, uh, um, the, the, the number of the clergy that is faithful grows. Because our experience in those two years, and it is very easy to find new faithful. Lots of people are come, calling from everywhere. So we have calls all the time. Anytime a priest is joining us, it's a big relief. But a few months later, then we are overwhelmed again. We cannot attend properly to the Legaspi mission. They have been waiting six months without Mass. We don't know whether that mission is dying or not. <coughs> because we are overwhelmed with the calls. In Zamboanga, the number of faithful has multiplied beyond a hundred people. A whole village of 15 <coughs> families abandoned altogether by the Novi Sordo. Why? Because they don't have much money. So they are not getting any more visits from the Novi Sordo in Zamboanga. The first one to visit them was Father Suelo. And elsewhere. And so there is an, it's easy to find the faithful. And, uh, and, uh, but it's not easy to find a faithful clergy. And a clergy who is willing to fight for the faith. It's not very easy. And so we have not proven anything yet. So we, uh, as far as we are concerned, fidelis, fideles inveniantur. Et nikil ostendeunt. Utinam uh, fideles uh, uh, inveniantur. Utinam, utinam uh, inveniant uh, salvationem per fidelitatem. So let us pray uh, for uh, the fidelity of the future clergy. Let us pray for this place as well and for the other houses of formation in a, in a, in a little world of the resistance. Let us pray that we uh, are enabled by the intercession of St. Joseph and of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Let us pray that we can um, uh, raise as much as we can a faithful clergy for your souls and for your eternal salvation and for the salvations of so many millions out there who are waiting for the resurrection of, uh, of the mystical body of the Church which has entered into its passion which has been almost entirely crucified by, uh, by the operation of error, by the enemies of the Church. And um, it really seems to us uh, that we are at the bottom of the wave. And when you are at the bottom of the wave, the only way is up. And 
And in this 19th of March, we have the sense that maybe the waters are rising a little bit, that we are not all that much at the very bottom of the wave any longer. Something is steering, hopefully. Some of the celestial hierarchies are steering uh, to some extent. We've seen a great demonstration of power of the infernal hierarchies of angels. Now there is a little steering in the celestial hierarchies because our Blessed Mother Saint Joseph are showing some kind of pleasure in what is happening in the church today, 19th of March, Feast of Saint Joseph, patron and protector of the Universal Catholic Church. In our Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, Amen.